Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tips. Julian here for another Drops episode. This is the Drops episode for week four. Before we jump into it, guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really appreciate all you guys that are subscribed, and if you do want to take your subscription to the next level, check out the link to my Patreon in the description below. Let's jump right into the video, guys, and let's start with some forwards that you can consider dropping from your team. The first guy on this list is Nazem Kadri of the Calgary Flames, 57% rostered right now, and he's a drop, guys. He's got one point through his first seven games, which is just awful. And he's currently skating on Calgary's third line with Dylan Dubé. They're not exactly giving him great opportunities here to succeed. Yes, he's top power play, but Calgary's power play hasn't really been that great. And Nazem Kadri is a pretty easy drop right now. You can keep an eye on him in case he turns it on later in the year. But as of right now, he's just wasted space on your team, especially as a natural center. There's so many good ones available. Dawson Mercer of the New Jersey Devils, 42% rostered. And he has been an absolute disappointment, especially after that super hot end of season he had last year. He's getting third line deployment. And through six games this year, he has absolutely zero points. And his peripherals are not exactly great either. Now, he's getting third line minutes, so I'm sure that's not helping him. But he's giving them no reason at all to put him on a higher line. So Dawson Mercer, honestly, right now, is a pretty easy drop. He may turn it on later in the season, but he's a wasted space on your team right now. JD Comfort of the Detroit Red Wings is someone who had a very hot start to the season. He's playing on the second line as their center. But I really didn't like JD Comfort going into this year. He was great with Colorado because he got such great opportunities with all the injuries playing top power play with McKinnon and Rantanen. But this year, he's not getting top power play time. And he did produce, but I don't expect him to produce very much longer. He's a drop. Blake Wheeler of the New York Rangers is also a drop, playing on the third line right now with Vincent Trocek. And he's had zero points through six games. Honestly, guys, let's drop Blake Wheeler. You'll be happy you did. Andrew Kopp of the Detroit Red Wings is my final drop. And yes, he started off the season very, very hot. But do you remember how terrible he was last year for this same Detroit Red Wings team? If you don't remember, let me catch you up. Last year, he put up basically no points, no peripherals, and people rostered him towards the end of the year just for face-off wins if you were in a categories league. That's how useless he was. Now, he showed flashes of his former self early this season, but guys, he's back to doing absolutely nothing, and I would cut ties with him. Let's jump into defenseman now, and the first guy on this list is Brady Shea of the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, he started off the season super, super hot, and he started to slow down. If you're able to trade him away for a decent price, if you're able to trade this guy away for a guy who wouldn't be on the waiver wire normally, I would absolutely do so because Shea, in my opinion, is a waiver. He started off very hot, but he doesn't get any kind of power play time or anything like that. And yes, he will occasionally score a goal, but he's not valuable enough to be owning 78% of leagues, that's for sure. Try to trade him to one of your friends that doesn't know better. Gustav Forsling of the Florida Panthers, 61% rostered, and he's someone who's also had a very, very poor start to the year. We expected him to be the top power play guy when Montour and Ekblad were confirmed out for the first couple months, but he never got that top power play spot. Instead, it went to Oliver ekman Larson. And Forsling usually is someone who gives you a relatively safe floor with peripherals as well. At least in the past couple of years he did. This year, his peripherals are pretty much nothing. So he's not scoring points. He's not getting you peripherals. There is no reason to hold this guy on your team right now. Rasmus Sandin of the Washington Capitals is now day-to-day -day with an injury. And guys, if that's what it takes for you to drop him, please do so. Because Rasmus Sandin has been completely useless this year. Is not getting top power play time. Is not putting up many peripherals. Is not someone that has any kind of fantasy value. I had him on the very first waiver wire video, guys. He is someone who needs to be dropped. Tory Krug is actually getting top power play time in St. Louis, but much like last year, he has been completely useless, has gotten no points, and is someone that needs to be dropped from your team. Ryan Graves of the Pittsburgh Penguins is another guy who started off very strong. Through his first two games, he had nine blocks. 
And he's also thrown on a couple of assists since then, but has honestly really done nothing peripheral wise. And you definitely cannot be expecting those points to come regularly from a guy like Graves. He's a drop as well. Jumping into goalies, and I have the two Edmonton goalies on here, Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell. Now, I'm not saying they're drops in all league formats. Obviously, if you're in a super deep league where there's really not that many goalies available at all on the waiver wire, you're holding on to Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell. They're probably gonna turn it around, or at least one of them is probably gonna turn it around at some point. My bet would be on Stuart Skinner. He was fantastic last year, and hopefully he can turn things around. But if you're in a shallow league, with plenty of goalies floating around the waiver wire, like half decent goalies too, I wouldn't mind dropping Stuart Skinner right now. Akira Schmid of the New Jersey Devils is another guy who is a drop at this point. Vanacek has drastically outplayed him, and in the most recent game that he played, he led in three goals and very few shots to the Washington Capitals, a team who hadn't scored three goals in regulation uh, since the beginning of the year. He let it in in the first period. So he was pulled after that period. Then Vanacek proceeded to come in and play much better, almost getting himself the win. So I'm not expecting Schmidt to get every second start anymore, maybe every third or fourth until he proves himself. So I would drop him in the majority of leagues. Peter Kachetkov is back in the AHL now. Frederick Anderson is healthy again. Uh, so Kachekov owners, you can drop him unless you have an NA spot in your league, then why not hang on to him? But for the most part of leagues, you're going to want to drop Kachetkov. And then finally, Semyon Varlamov, the New York Islanders, is still 10% rostered and is literally a guy who's only going to get back-to-back -back starts in New York because Sorokin's a phenomenal goalie. So I'm not expecting Varlamov to get a lot of starts. Definitely should not be owned in basically any leagues. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content today, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for supporting the channel, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.